Hey everyone, welcome to Mythology Explained. In today's video, we're going to discuss Cain, the first person to be born, as Adam and Eve were created by God, not born in the traditional sense. The first person to murder someone, his younger brother, Abel, a man cursed by God with the mark of Cain, which would visit sevenfold the retribution upon anyone who perpetrated violence against Cain. A man, some versions claim, is the son of Satan or another fallen angel. And a man who, in one version, the one given in the book of Adam and Eve, kills his brother so that he can marry the more beautiful of their two sisters. We're going to begin by examining what is said about Cain in scripture, which, in this video, will be the King James version of the Old and New Testament. Following that, we'll get into a little discussion about God rejecting Cain's sacrifice and Cain murdering his own brother. Afterwards, we're going to dive into several apocryphal works, examining details from each, like demons and archons, that pertain to Cain. And finally, we're going to finish the video off with a more in-depth look at the book of Adam and Eve, which goes into great detail about the lives of Cain and Abel. Let's get into it. After Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden of Eden, they had two children together, two sons, Cain, their firstborn, and Abel. Cain worked to the earth, a farmer, and Abel kept sheep, a shepherd. Both of them made offerings to God, but not both of their offerings were accepted. Cain offered up some of his harvest, and Abel offered up the firstborn lambs of his flock. Cain's offering was found wanting and rejected, while Abel's was graciously accepted. This put Cain, already a vessel for sin, in a dark mood, filling him with anger, to which God responded, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. After these words, Cain and Abel talk, and later, Cain murders his brother in a field. God confronts Cain, asking him where his brother is, and Cain says he doesn't know. Am I my brother's keeper? God says that Abel's blood cries out from the earth, and that Cain is now cursed by the earth. From then on, Cain became a fugitive and a vagabond. He says that the punishment is more than he can bear, and bewails that anyone who finds him will kill him for his transgression. God proclaims that anyone who harms Cain will have their offense visited back on them sevenfold, and to ensure no one accidentally harmed Cain, he marks him so that all the world would know. Cain became an exile, banished from the presence of God, and he came to dwell to the east of Eden, in the land of Nod, where he and his wife had a son, Enoch, and they built a city that they named after their son. Why God rejected Cain's offering isn't delineated, but a popular belief stems from the quality of each sacrifice, which, in turn, is symbolic of each brother's character and their faith in God, their dedication to the righteous path. The firstborn of one's flock is much more valuable than a generic portion of one's harvest, as it is not only the result of one's labors, but something indispensable for future prosperity, ensuring the continuation of the flock. An equivalent offering on Cain's part, perhaps, would have been a portion of the seed he intended to plant the following year, or to have burned and salted a swath of his fields. Because of this, Abel's offering is a pledge of faith, placing himself, his life, and his success in the hands of the Lord. By comparison, what Cain offered was paltry, for it was but a meager showing from something that would be produced each year. Thus, it was not a gesture of faith, but more so a half-hearted, performative gesture, a generic token, tantamount to going through the motions of something only done because it was expected. Basically, you get what you give. If you do it right, you will benefit. And if you don't, sin will suffuse. This idea is made clearer in the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, in which each offering is described with greater detail, going further in highlighting the disparity between the two. Here's the passage from the JPS Tanakh. Cain brought an offering to the Lord from the fruit of the soil, and Abel, for his part, brought the choicest of the firstlings of his flock. Had Cain offered the best of his harvest, his offering, I'm guessing, would have been accepted. But even then, because Abel's offering impacted his future success, the offerings of each brother still would not have been of equal value, as you can't grow your flock, let alone sustain it, 
if it isn't being replenished with newborns. As for why Cain murdered Abel, well, there doesn't seem to be much to explain here. Cain wasn't a man imbued with virtue, rather, he was innately sinful and prone to all that entailed, namely, greed, jealousy, and anger. He was jealous of Abel, whose offer was accepted, and he was angry at God, who rejected his offer. His jealousy and anger compounded into murderous intent, which resulted in Cain killing his own brother. In the New Testament, no additional information pertaining to Cain's life is given. The few times he is mentioned, his name is synonymous with sin, and is used like a curse to illustrate greed and wickedness. Here are two examples. Jude 11. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. John 3.12 not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Though there is little said about Cain in the New Testament, one line from John 3.12, who was of that wicked one, has led to an interesting line of thought, which is that Cain was actually the son of Satan, or of a fallen angel. A notion given credence by the use of the epithet, that wicked one, to describe Cain's origins, either of his birth or nature. Perhaps the most prominent of the Christian commentators to espouse this was Tertullian, Quintus Septimius Florens Tertullianus in Latin, who was an early Christian theologian, born sometime between 155 and 160, living until 220. This idea is also considered and expanded upon in Jewish exegesis, such as the Targum Jonathan, in which the serpent in the garden is identified with Samael, here called the Angel of Death. He sheds his serpent's coils and reveals himself to Eve in his angelic form in the Garden of Eden. Later, when the birth of Cain is told, it is said that Eve, who is called Hava, desired the angel. That Samael was the serpent in the garden, and that Eve was said to have desired the angel in connection with the verse in which Cain is conceived and born, seems to indicate that Cain was a spawn of sin not sired by Adam, the original progenitor and patriarch of humanity. Other works that discuss Cain include the Apocryphon of John, a 2nd century Sethian Gnostic work, the Hypostasis of the Archons, an exegesis written sometime in the 3rd or 4th century that uses the first six books of Genesis to express Gnostic mythology, Pseudo-Philo, a 1st century Jewish work, and the Book of Jubilees written about 100 BC. In the Apocryphon of John, Eve is seduced by Yaldaboth, an evil deity depicted as a lion-headed serpent. In the Hypostasis of the Archons, Eve is taken against her will by a pair of Archons, entities we'll touch on presently. In Gnosticism, as well as other religions similar to it, there are seven Archons, each one connected to a planet. They, including Yaldaboth, who was counted among their number, built the physical universe to prevent souls from transcending to spiritual bliss. The material plane is the prison, and the flesh each person is encased in is the shackles. Pseudo Philo recounts how Cain was 15 years old when he murdered his brother, going on to detail Cain's life following his escape from the land of Nod, where he was exiled to after taking his brother's life. Per this account, Cain sighed six children, with the exception of Enoch, the only one of the six to be mentioned in the Bible, the other five children and their descendants went on to spread evil throughout the world. Here, Cain lived to the very old age of 730. Lastly, in the Book of Jubilees, Cain's story is expanded upon, explaining how he used a rock to bludgeon Abel to death and, later, how his instrument of murder became the cause of his own death when his house caved in with him inside stones crushing him. Here's a passage from the Book of Jubilee that explains the concept of tools of murder becoming the demise of their wielders. With the instrument with which a man kills his neighbor, with the same shall he be killed. After the manner that he wounded him, in like manner shall they deal with him. As well, there is a Talmudic tradition in which God makes a horn grow from Cain's head after he murders Abel, with Cain later being killed by Lamech, his own grandson. We're going to spend the rest of the video looking at Cain's life 
as it is presented in the life of Adam and Eve, which is generally thought to have been written sometime in the first century. In this version, Eve first gives birth to twins, Cain and his sister Luluwa. Cain, said to mean hater, was named so because he hated his sister while they shared the warm dark of their mother's womb, and Luluwa, said to mean beautiful, was so named because she was even more beautiful than her mother. They conceived again, and later, Eve gave birth to another set of twins, Abel and his sister Aclea. Even as a young child, Cain was callous, selfish, and disobedient, frequently choosing not to accompany his father and brother when they offered sacrifices to God. First Satan came to Abel, but he was repelled when Abel prayed to God. Following this failure, Satan approached Cain, telling him that his parents intended to marry Cain's beautiful sister to Abel because they loved him more, leaving him the younger, ugly sister to marry. Satan then counsels Cain to kill his brother, which would allow him to marry Luluwa instead. Interestingly, in this account, the vocations of each brother are switched, making Abel the farmer and Cain the shepherd. Brought to the altar by Adam, Abel's offering is accepted because God perceived his heart and the goodness therein. Cain's, though, is rejected. He only offered a sacrifice to placate his father, and when the sacrifice was made, his eyes were on the lamb, focused on his own profit, his heart not open to God, instead filled with thoughts of greed and violence. When the boys were older, Cain 15 and Abel 12, Adam and Eve thought it was time for them to take wives, deciding to marry Cain to Abel's sister and vice versa. Satan finds Cain a second time, revealing the impending marital plans in store for him, telling Cain to do what he says, that if he does as instructed, the beautiful sister will be his wife, and he will be showered in gifts. After this, Cain promptly goes to the cave where Eve was, proceeding to beat and curse his mother, a petty and cruel expression of acute displeasure about what his parents intended. Subsequently, more sacrifices are made, Cain's are rejected, Abel's are accepted, and all the while, hatred smouldered in Cain's heart until it blazed, consumed by it, resolving him to kill his brother. Cain lures his brother into the fields by asking him to accompany him on a walk. Once alone, far from their parents and sisters, Cain, who contrived the activity so that Abel walked in front, attacks his brother from behind, brutalizing him with a walking staff. Here's the passage. Then Cain came up to him, comforted him with his words while walking a little behind him. Then he ran up to him and beat him with the staff, blow after blow, until he was dazed. But when Abel fell down on the ground and saw that his brother meant to kill him, he said to Cain, Oh, my brother, have pity on me. By the breasts we have sucked, do not hit me. By the womb that bore us and that brought us into the world, do not beat me to death with that staff. If you are set on killing me, take one of these large stones and kill me outright. Then Cain, the hard-hearted and cruel murderer, took a large stone and beat his brother's head with it until his brains oozed out, and he wallowed in his blood before him, and Cain was not sorry for what he had done. Cain immediately attempts to bury his brother's mangled body, but the earth wouldn't accept it, rejecting it and spitting it out three times. God, furious, knew what Cain had done, so he marked him the way that was described earlier in the video. Cain returns to his parents in a sorry state, both pitiable and despicable, terrified, defiled and blood-soaked. Upon learning of what transpired, a profound sorrow set into Adam and Eve, and Cain left, never to reunite with his parents. He took Luluwa, the older beautiful sister, with him, making her his wife and siring many children by her. Years after the death of Abel, Adam and Eve conceived one last time, a son, Seth, who was good like Abel was good, yet greater in mind and body, intelligent, willful, tall, handsome, and strong. When Seth was grown, he married Cain's twin sister, whom it was originally intended that Cain should marry. They had children, and Seth forbade them from spending time with Cain's children, who made their home to the west, below the place Cain murdered Abel years earlier, keeping the two families separate. Because Cain was cursed by God, he could find no peace, nor could he settle anywhere, forced to wander from place to place. Eventually, he came to visit one of his sons, Lamech, 
was now blind and well into his years. Cain went out to the field, but unfortunately for him, Lamech, blind man that he was, mistook him for a threat, thinking him a wild beast or robber. He let loose an arrow, piercing Cain in the side, then followed up that shot with stone from his sling. Here's the passage that describes Cain's death. Then Lamech shot at Cain with his arrow and hit him in his side, and Lamech struck him with a stone from his sling, and the stone struck his face and knocked out both his eyes. Then Cain fell dead instantly. Then Lamech and the young shepherd came up to him and found him lying on the ground, and the young shepherd said to him, It is Cain, our grandfather, whom you have killed, my lord. Then Lamech grieved in bitterness and regret, and he clapped his hands together and struck the head of the youth with his flat palm, and the youth fell as if he were dead. But Lamech thought the youth was pretending, so he took up a stone and struck him, and smashed his head until he died, perpetuating the sin of kinslaying. And that's it for this video. If you enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. As always, leave your video suggestions down below.